Can the best be beaten? That's what we're gonna look at today with a straight up one-on-one -on -one insane loom battle. Or loom off, if you will. You see, on this side, we have the reigning champ, the Signum Cuda Titanium Fully Loomed. A watch with a pretty long name, but it's a watch that many consider to be one of, if not the best, when it comes to crazy good loom. And not just for its fully loomed dial, but just for every aspect of it. It's great. I've shown that it's one of the best I've ever seen in my own review, and over on Jody's channel, it's constantly been dominating the loom wars. So that's the champ, and then on this side, we have the challenger, with the new Wise Watch's Hitman Hit 66 fully loomed. Again, a watch with a pretty long name. But while this watch is new, Wise isn't when it comes to loom. As they've shown before, they know what they're doing with the Adamascus 88 Diver, as that's one of my kings of loom, one of the best watches I've ever seen. And Wise thinks this one may even be better. Now, eventually, I will do a review on this Hitman, but it will be a while. But in the meantime, if you really want to check it out, go over to Dave's channel, as he did a recent review of it. And that's actually partially why I'm doing this. Dave was thoroughly impressed with the loom, and I left a comment wondering how it compared to the Signum. Wise just happened to see it, and they reached out wondering if I still had a Signum, and if so, would I be willing to test it out? To which I replied that I do, and that that's a fantastic idea. And for the sake of transparency, the promotional tag here is up because Wise did provide this watch, and they aren't asking for it back. Well, Signum also lent in the CUDA, and it's actually going to be used in a giveaway sometime next month, so keep an eye out for that. Anyway, enough talk, let's get ready to rumble. On the left, we have the Wise Hitman, and on the right, we have the Signum Cuda Titanium. Now, it doesn't take long before we see that the Hitman's dial has stronger loom, which, to be blunt, is absolutely amazing. I mean, I thought the Signum was crazy good, but somehow this looks brighter. The thing is, though, that fully loom dials is kind of a gimmick, or at least they normally are as what matters more is being able to see the hands and actually read the time. And in that way, the Signum looks like it might have an advantage with bigger and wider hands. Or maybe not, because I'm going to stop it right here. Because at this point, you can't really see the Signum anymore. While, well, just look at it. The Hitman is there, and it's still fairly readable. And that is just, that's just amazing. The Signum blew me away last year, and this Wise took it down while still having some fight left in it. Now, to be fair, the green C3 Signum is supposed to be a little bit better than this blue BGW9 version. But since we are comparing it to a blue Hitman, I think it's a fair fight. And even though it lost, the Signum here deserves a lot of credit for not only building a great watch, but also raising the bar so high. I wouldn't be surprised if at some point they were back with something possibly even better. And since the Wise did such an amazing job, I just had to know how it compared to my other Kings of Loom. So I set up another test, and this time it's up against the original King of Loom, the Phoebus Great Wall, as well as the awesome Orient Star Diver and Wise's own Adamascus 88, the three Kings of Loom that have never definitively been beaten, as well as a Seiko monster way over at the right, just as a reference to show you how good these watches really are because that monster doesn't stay in it for long. And here, it's pretty much the same story. Whatever Wise has done with their dials is amazing. And normally, like I said, normally fully loomed dials are a bit of a novelty, mostly because they fade out much sooner than the hands in the indices. But here, that dial is so good, it actually helps you see the indices as well as the hands. So even as those start to fade, you can still make them out a little bit easier with this Wise. And I paused it right here, because at this point you can see the Hitman is going to win. At this point, it's pretty dim, but you can still make it out. While everything else is pretty much gone. The only thing really left standing is the hands on Wise's own 88. Although, in time, even that blinks out. Leaving the Hitman as really the last man standing. And possibly living up to its name by taking out the competition. Which to me is kind of crazy. You see, the Great Wall was my original King of Loom. The first watch I really ran into that blew everything else away. And in time, I started finding other watches that were as good. And I started calling those also Kings of Loom because none of them really seemed to beat each other. 
or they were always so close that it was pretty hard to say one was clearly better than the other. But here, there's no question about it. This is the best watch I've ever seen for Loom, period. I don't know what Wise is doing, but whatever they're doing, it's working. So as far as I know, this is now the true king of Loom, or maybe the emperor of Loom. And I think Jody needs to get one of these just to do a new Loom Wars episode with it. But in the meantime, as usual, let me know what you think down below. What you think about the watches, the designs, the Loom, and if you have any questions about this one for the real review, which I'll eventually get to. And as always, you guys know what to do down below. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and I'll see you next time.